on today's show. I just don't have enough willpower to write. Please help me. On this episode, we're going to talk about the science of willpower and how you can do, use better activities and tactics in order to drive better writing outcomes. Here's the hint. It's not actually about willpower that you need. There's something else you're going to learn on today's episode that can help you in order to turn your desire to write into words on a page. One of the most common things that sort of aspiring writers struggle with and profess to struggling with is, well, maybe I'm just not motivated. I can't get motivated to write. And what's interesting about it is the science of habits and incentives are actually quite different than that one. It's not just about motivation. It's actually something else that really affects us and helping us develop these activities and habits that help us make progress on our writing. On this episode, we're going to dive in and talk to Jason Starr, who's a novelist, a writer. He's written works such as Gotham, uh, which is in the DC comic book universe that you may know of. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit about what is it like to develop the right style habits, especially early in your career, before you're getting paid to write. How do you overcome the challenge of, I just don't have the willpower, and instead create the right incentives? But part of that is definitely getting used to um that aspect but creatively it was it was getting into um the routine of of writing mm -hmm. so i had jobs those part-time jobs that always gave me um time to write uh you know at you know part of the day um if you have a full-time job like there are people who write during their commute i mean you mm -hmm. just have that at least an hour you know that you're but i'm but it has to be consistent i think mm -hmm because you really have to get into that mindset of producing work every day. It's not really about, um, I mean, you have to have that fantasy of what's going to happen when you finish the, the book. Right, right. Writing every day. Like, yeah, the fantasy of, you know, me seeing my comic book in, you know, in uh, stores as a kid. But mm -hmm. um, now it's just like a, a vision of it being published mm -hmm. and how it's going to be published and what publisher and, what the next book after that like you have that plan in the back of your head but you still have to um produce every day mm -hmm. so yeah so it's getting into those um habits and and one of the telemarketing jobs i had i remember uh there was an incentive that if you got uh three sales you could leave for the day so i was like my hottest prospects <laughs> <laughs> and so that i can go off and write you know so sometimes i was there for like an hour yep and I went off and I, and I did the writing. So, um, yeah, I mean, so, so to do all of that, I think you have to have a, I think the last ingredient is the, the passion mm -hmm. for wanting to do it. Mm -hmm. um, for, because um, you're not going to be able to get into like a uh, regimented routine of something unless you have a real passion for it. Mm -hmm. If you want to work out and get in shape, you have to put that hour or two hours every day to do it and you know it's not going to happen otherwise so you have to really make that commitment to it and um and then uh yeah i think the the ta i actually think the talent is a, an important component mm -hmm. but not the main component i know many talented people who just didn't have those qualities i just talked about who didn't make it i mean there are people in my creative writing class who were great writers in in at binghamton where i went to school um some great um, writers in those classes, but they never continued. Yeah. You know? I think, uh, so I think there's something that makes some people continue mm -hmm. and uh, talent is just an assumption. Like it's an assumption that unless you do have talent, you're not going to really have that drive. You're not going to have those fantasies of success that motivate you and all those components to do it. So. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you uh, clearly, I mean, you clearly love to write, right? I mean, I, I had to scroll like twice down your Wikipedia page to find all the things you've written here. Do you, does it, is it like, is there something that you do that kind of like puts you through that grind period? Because there is just a grind to any book, right? Where you sort of get tired of this thing. Do you have any things that you do to kind of keep yourself moving through it from the first, you know, it's like the first dates, they're always nice. And then it gets like harder and harder to keep going. <laughs> What's your style when you kind of hit those sort of walls along the way? It has to be fun. I mean, the, the the main thing is like I feel like when I really have a good writing day, I feel like it was fun. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed being, you know, 
even if the character is dark and disturbing, like I enjoyed <laughs> those, those lines. There was some enjoyment. If it wasn't fun, it would be really hard uh, to be motivated to do it. I, I co-wrote a couple of, four novels with Ken Bruin. It's not just you, trust me. Every single writer struggles with the idea of motivation and keeping themselves motivated, particularly when you're not getting paid only as a writer. In fact, researcher Katie Milkman talked about the importance of understanding the difference between motivation and incentives. And in fact, one of the things to know is that not everything is fun. In fact, there are lots of things that are hard. Sitting down in front of a keyboard to type is a very challenging thing. And so what Katie actually talks a lot is similar to the things that Jason said, is to understand the power of incentives, particularly personal incentives. What she describes is this idea of kind of habit layering. And what she describes in this activity is how you can pair up something that you really enjoy with something you don't enjoy and use that as almost an incentive or reward. As Jason shares with us, one of the big things was that he set these sort of mini milestones. And when he completed those ones, he had some kind of positive thing, whether it's able to go have a beer or whether to go home early or whether whatever it might be. And especially as a writer, you have to figure out what are those things you're running towards in small doses and be able to get to that point and be able to have some kind of reward. In fact, what Katie talks about is a story about going to the gym. And so she said she had a trouble going to the gym and getting herself motivated. Uh, she said what she didn't have trouble doing and was motivated by is listening to Harry Potter on audiobooks. And so what she did is she actually stacked those two habits. And she told herself that the only way you get to listen to Harry Potter, which was certainly a joyful thing that she liked to do, was when she was on the treadmill. And the same thing goes for us as writers. Let's say there's something you enjoy doing. Maybe there's a Netflix show you like to watch, or maybe there's some kind of a series you care about on Audible, or maybe there's even a game you wanna watch. Use that to only reward yourself when you reach your targets or your goals. And my important thing that I would share with you is for writers, don't tie that to a word count goal. Because what I find particularly when you're writing is that this can force you into these weird habits of like, oh, well, these are extra words to get me over the line. Instead, I would encourage you to tie it to a time goal. I spent 90 minutes writing, therefore I get to watch the next episode of you on, you, on, on Netflix. Or I spent the last three hours writing, now I get to watch the Jets game um, on, uh, on Monday Night Football. Or I don't know if anyone watched the Jets game, but you get the idea behind it. Sorry, Jets fan. So that's the idea behind incentive writing. And as you're trying to build those pieces out, number one, Map it to time. The key thing to remember here is we don't want to focus on word count because oftentimes word count might be slower early on or you might be forcing words instead of just the time. So focus it on time. Number two, make sure you remember you want to have some kind of a milestone that you set in advance. It's this many hours. It's this many minutes. It's this sort of thing when I complete it. And number three, what is the positive incentive that you get behind it? That's one of the secrets of incentive writing is finding those micro incentives along the way. And remember, if you hit your goal today, great, double celebrate. If you don't, remember the next goal will happen, but don't give yourself a reward if you don't wind up doing the activity. And as you start to make these things happen, suddenly they become habit, they become a process. Uh, and importantly, remember, oftentimes setting goals and habits is hard. People talk about not being motivated. There's two parts of this one. There's motivation and there's accountability. And that's one of the other things that Katie doesn't talk about as much, but probably should. The other thing, if you go to the gym and you tell people, you know, to sort of say hi and see people, seeing those common people going at the same time and having other people at the gym high five you, other people ask where you were at and those sorts of things can also help us. So remember, incentive writing, find incentives. Once you hit that incentive, get the incentive. And if you don't hit the incentive, try to involve other people into it so you can succeed. Remember, writing oftentimes feels like a solo activity, particularly like going to the gym, but involve other people. Find a group class, find a coach, find a writing help, whatever it is, never write alone. And when you do write, reward yourself. You've done something awesome. <laughs> happy, happy writing. And uh, remember, you deserve that beer, that wine, that Coke, that sort of soda, that chocolate cake, whatever it is, because you got those writing words down. Happy writing, everybody. I could do this, the Spider-Man. Yeah, web Spider-Man web slingers. So everyone get your Spider-Man <laughs> web slingers on here and let's get a couple photos for the crew here. Spider-Man web slingers with Jason Starr.